Hey everyone, welcome to Maker Camp. Today is Weird Science Wednesday. We're here with Dan Spangler. Dan, how's it going? Hey everyone. How's and it going? we are here with Make Labs interns uh, Ibby. Hi. And ben. Hey guys, uh, how's it going in Make Labs? Doing and good. So today we are doing combustion cannons. Yes. So we will be showing you how to make some. Uh, show you an example that Dan's built himself, a little more advanced. So we'll be going over the safety, uh, all considerations, and then uh, talking about PVC, the glues, and how to assemble it. So if you haven't seen Dan's uh, tutorial yet, check that out on the Google Plus page. And uh, before we go into it, Dan, you kind of have a reputation around Make Labs for being kind of uh, an expert in some fields. What, what's that about, and uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? Um, well, my expertise in the lab is um, high voltage electronics and uh, things that go boom or pyrotechnics. Okay. <laughs> Very cool. So um, before you got here working at Make Labs, uh, how did you get involved in the whole making things that go boom? Can you pull up the... Uh, it was kind of an accident. Uh, in high school, I was trying to create a hydrogen converter, and it kind of catastrophically exploded on me. And uh, after uh, cleaning up the mess, I kind of sat down and looked at it and uh, thought to myself, well, maybe I can make this uh, shoot something. And then it kind of just took off from there. Uh, I took pieces that I found around the garage and I coupled them together and I was able to make a working cannon. Uh, I promptly shot out the window of my dad's truck and oh. um, it just kept expanding and growing from there. Very cool. So I think today we're going to have you show us kind of step by step and I think Ben and Ivy are going to be following along. Is that, is that right guys? You got parts in the lab? Yep, we got, everything. I think so. we got everything set up. We got all the materials so we're ready to go. Cool. Okay. And so, uh, Dan, what else can you tell us about combustion cans before we get into the project? Uh, are we using like a like a flammable hairspray or what? Yeah, how do we make these we're fire? using a, it's an aerosol base. You know, it can be um, you know room freshener, it can be hairspray, it can be body spray. It's just as long as it says you know danger, flammable, avoid heat, fire, flames, and smoking while spraying. Uh, that usually is a good indication that it's a it's a proper fuel source. Okay, okay. And uh, what other safety considerations should we take into account? Uh, um, the PVC is uh, brittle in some conditions, so it's a good idea to wrap it in duct tape to kind of prevent the uh, um, fragmentation in case of a catastrophic failure, which is very rare and never happens, but we like to keep it <laughs> safe. <laughs> Just in case. Um, never point it at anything you don't intend to uh, shoot. Uh, always treat it as if it's loaded because sometimes residual... Uh, Vapor stay inside the combustion chamber and it can go off if you click it. Um, always wear safety glasses uh, and if you're sensitive to hearing you could wear hearing protection but it's not necessary. Okay, cool. And um, how about what else do you like to do in your spare time? I, I know you have a couple machines um, and you're a pretty good machinist. Uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a, a well-established machinist uh, and a carpenter and a welder. And uh, in my spare time, I am working on a couple of robots and a jet engine. And are these full-size robots? Are these like little mechs? Are these what? Uh, what about prototypes. Uh, okay. um, my ultimate goal is to create a, a, a mech of uh, full size, uh, like yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Groovy. Okay. And so, uh, what else can you tell us, maybe about being a maker and just tinkering and things you've done, like? projects you've worked on in the past? Let's see. Uh, I did the the RC flying wing, which was a big oh, hit. Okay. You can see in the background right behind you. Let's see. So let me grab that, actually. Okay. Um, I just love making. You know, when I was a kid, I had I had Legos, and that's all I ever wanted. And then eventually I moved on to the, you know, the Technic and the Mindstorms, and I started making robots and vehicles and everything like that. And I just always was trying to expand my knowledge when it came to mechanics and technology. And um, in high school, I did drafting. And I learned a lot about um, you know, designing and um, development and research and stuff like that. And then when I got to the JC, I took machining and welding, and I got really good at that as well. My grandfather is also a, a professional welder and machinist, so I learned a lot from him. Very cool. And usually, I mean, this is like the perfect example. You kind of take a project and you really have a cool artistic style to it. So, yeah. Um, how did you get involved with that? I mean, like, you know, 
I'm uh, in addition to a, a fabricator and a maker, I'm also a digital artist. It's my kind of other profession. And uh, I've just always had a knack for making things look cool. Well, in my opinion, a lot of other people <laughs> like it, so I guess it's cool. And uh, I just um, really had a lot of patience for making things look good. So um, I think that's what really helps make me stand and out. Is that kind of important, having the patience to kind of make sure you get the attention yeah. to detail? Uh, you have to have the patience to go the extra mile to do the extra work that may be a little tedious and then um, to get the results that you want. Cool, cool. So, do you want to uh, you want to jump into today's project and sure. get us started? You guys ready? Yeah. All right. So I have um, as you you can get the list on the the hangout, and um, we, we have all various PVC parts and tools. Um, we're going to start out with our combustion chamber. Now, this is a piece of Schedule 40 three-inch PVC. It's about 18 inches long. Um, we're just going to use 18 inches for now, but you can experiment with different um, size combustion chambers. You can go up to 4 inch, or you can use longer chambers, but we're going to just start out with this nice and easy. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to mark a line you know, all the way across, because that's going to be kind of a reference for all our other measurements. So I'm just going to take a ruler here and a black sharpie, which is a good contrast on the white. PVC, and we're just going to make a straight line all the way across. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, Dan, where uh, where are you? It's a cool backdrop. You like outside in the forest, or <laughs> yeah, it's this neat little cabin out in the forest in um, okay, cool. Monterio. Very cool. So I got a question right. too. Um, I was looking around, like in the in the lab, we have a bunch of uh, scrap parts. Yeah. So I don't know if, if everyone can see, um, but this. PVC and this PVC, they're pretty different. I mean, they they relatively have the same outer dimensions, but they're different thicknesses. So, yeah. what's the difference with that, and how that do is, I know what I want? That is the difference in the schedule. So, when I say schedule okay. 40, if you hold up the one on your um, that one, that's schedule 40, and then the, the other one, schedule? that's the thickness of the walls. And if you hold up the other one. That's thinner wall, that's schedule 20. And then even now it goes up to schedule 80, and schedule 80 is about a third thicker than the, uh, the schedule 40. And then there's actually 120. It's really hard to find that stuff at your local hardware store. So for this, we're going to want to use, as you specified, the schedule 40. It's got thicker walls. It's got the thicker walls. and it can More hold, pressure. It should be rated for about 200 PSI. And usually it says it right on the, uh, the PVC, actually, right? It'll say, yeah, schedule 40 on the side. Can we see that? Right there. There you go. Cool. Now, actually, also, usually it says the the size of the pipe it is. It's cut off on this one, but it'll usually say three or four. That looks like four inch PVC. Okay. And then when it says four, is that um is that the outside diameter or is that the inside diameter? It's kind of confusing. It actually doesn't refer to any dimension, the inside dimension or the outside dimension. It's just like a I guess an average of the two. Um, so you got to be kind of careful with that. When someone says, you know, three-inch diameter PVC, it doesn't actually refer to any specific dimension. It just refers to three-inch PVC. Okay. Cool. So, all right. Now that we have our line marked, um, you're going to go from one end and you're going to go down to four inches and you're going to make a little tick mark. All right. And that's going to be um, the uh, reference line for your electrodes. And then what I like to do, it's a trick that I kind of learn is I'll take masking tape like this, okay, and I'll wrap it around the pipe at my mark. And what I'll do is I'll try to be as straight as possible so that when it wraps all the way around, it lines back up where it started. So you can see right here how it's... Um, you know, there's no offset or anything like that. And then what I'll do is I'll mark it on the line that I drew on the PVC. I'll make a line on the tape. And then I'll use an X-Acto knife or a hobby knife like this. And I'll cut it right at that line. All right. And then what you do is you take the tape off. And what this does is this tape is now the circumference of your pipe. Okay. All right. And then what we do is we lay it down on the table. 
And now I can divide this into four sections so that we, when we, uh, when we put our electrodes, we want our electrodes to be opposite of each other on the pipe. Oh. So when they go inside, they're you know at the same, at the exact same position. Cool. So using your ruler, you measure it out, and it's about 11 inches. It doesn't have to be super accurate. So I'm just going to say it's 11 inches. So we want to divide this into four sections. So we'll go to five and a half. We'll go two and three quarters. And we'll go, let's see, one, two, eight and a quarter. All right, so you're going to make a marks at all those points. Uh, I like okay. to make a full line. All right. Then we're going to take our tape. We're going to put it back on the pipe. And so now, with the marks on the tape, we know exactly where to position the electrodes. Just put it on the same spot, wrap it around, make sure it meets back with the other tape. And when you're done with that, you can make your tick marks. So I'm just going to do a line and then a little T. All right. I don't know if you can see how well you can see that. Yeah, so that's like a clever way to make sure we have four accurate points uh, right. equally spaced on the, the circumference. Okay. Yep. All right, and you can take your tape off. That's all you need. And you can see our tick marks. There's one right there, and then there's one right there. Cool. All right, after that's done, we can go ahead and drill our holes. We're going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit. And you're just going to try and drill as straight as you can. And you're just going to... All the way through. And then you do it on the other side, opposite side. All right, that's all there is to it. And so, what are those holes for, Dan? These are the holes for your electrodes. So, we're not actually going to use a tap to thread the holes, we're just going to use the screw. Okay. The screw is harder than the plastic. So the one-eighth hole I found is just about the right size for it to uh, thread itself. Okay. All right. Once we have our holes drilled, we can go ahead and glue on um, some PVC pieces. So you should have a slip coupler, so it should be a slip fitting on both sides. And then we'll also have a female threaded adapter. So it's a slip coupling on one side, and then it's threaded on the inside. So we're going to use our PVC glue. Now, when using the PVC glue, you should wait about, it says on the back, you should wait about half an hour before um, using it. Otherwise, the glue can fail, and I have had that happen to me, and it didn't end well. So, you should definitely wait for the glue to dry. So, uh, what is uh, all the different glues, Dan? I know there's like purple glues, and green glues, and gray glues, and there's PVC cement, and there's cleaner, and how does that all work, and what do we need for this project? Right, so you just need to get, you know, the blue stuff, it's just wet and dry, PVC pipe cement. Uh, okay. it's, it's a solvent. It actually uh, melts the plastic, and then when you put the two together, it hardens and actually physically bonds them together, so it all becomes one piece of plastic, actually. Okay. Right? And when you push down your part, you want to rotate it a little bit and then push down all the way, so that makes sure that there's no gaps or um, leaks or anything like that. All right? Because this has to be airtight, really, right? Right. Yeah, uh, and one important thing, make sure your slip coupling is near where your electrodes are, right? Okay. So this is going to become the front of your cannon, and this is going to become the back of your cannon. All right, so here's the uh, female threaded adapter. Take some more glue. Just do it on the inside. Push it down. Push it down all the way. There you go. So are those both the same pieces, Dan? One's an adapter and one's just a regular coupling. And so what's on the adapter part? The can adapter part, closer? I don't know if you can see, it's threaded Okay. right in here. So we can use our end cap like this is a clean-out cap. So just thread in here like this, and then Maybe it's sealed. Then, do you have one of those in the lab, too, that we could see? Which part? The, uh, the adapter yeah. part. It looks like it looks like the the regular coupling, except it has ridges on it, which helps to uh, get a hold of it, so you can uh, uh, unscrew it because sometimes the the threaded part gets stuck. 
Ridge. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see, but we have one that's got little ridges on it and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, now that we have this, we can do our adapter. And so these are um, reduction bushings. All right? And if you're lucky, you can find uh, just one bushing that is the right size. But uh, at our store, we weren't able to find the right one, so I have to use a combination of two. So I have a three to two inch reduction bushing, and then I have a two to one and a half inch reduction bushing. And so we'll have to put one inside the other, and then the other one will go inside the end of our cannon. And that's just because we didn't have the right PVC parts at that's the because, hardware yeah, store. Yeah, our hardware store didn't have the right parts, so we uh, get creative. Okay. But what you're looking for is you're looking for a three to 1.5 inch reduction. Okay, and why are we choosing the 1.5 inch uh, reduction? Is that the size we need for the ping pong balls? That's our barrel. 1.5 inch uh, PVC pipe, Schedule 40, is just the right size for a um, ping pong ball. Okay. All right. I'm gonna apply a little bit of glue. Hey, Ben, how are you guys coming along? You got any progress on your uh, combustion cannon? Guy, you can see here, got the reducer in there. Okay, and that was cemented in there, Dan. Yep, everything's all cemented together. Okay, that should be good. All right, now we can move on to our grips. Okay. All right, so what you're gonna need to do is uh, get some three-quarter inch um, tees like this, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off the bottom like this. Uh, how well you can see this. Okay. Or, you know, if you want to save a little money, you could buy a cross piece. You can just cut it in half. Oh, okay. So, we'll do. so you cut off the bottom like this, and then we're going to take our cordless drill again, and we're going to use a quarter inch drill bit. All right. Can you do whatever he's doing? No, and then we're going to drill two holes, one here and one there. And that's going to be our mounting point. I'm going to draw. So that's where our holes need to be. Okay. Like that. All right. So you just line up your bit. And go like that. And so, Dan, what is this piece going to do when we're all done? Is it it's like the handle part? Yeah, so this is going to be your mounting bracket for your grips. So you can see here. Yeah, you can see on Nick's right there. See how I have the bolts in the holes? Let me show everybody. It's a very secure mount. and makes it very easy to hold your cannon. So you can see nice. I drilled the holes here. This piece right here, right? Yeah. Okay, so you just took, a, you just took this coupling piece yeah. and then the hacksaw and you cut this kind of in half, right? Right. Okay, and then we already mounted, and then we mount the bolts, right? Right. Cool. So you want to do that to uh, both your couplings. You need two. You need two. Okay, one for the front, one for the back. Okay. okay. Clean off the burrs. Use a knife to help do that. You can just do it by hand. Okay. Now we have two. All right. We'll go back to our combustion chamber here. And then I'm going to use a ruler, and I'm going to extend the line that we already drew on our chamber, and I'm going to mm -hmm. extend it onto the couplings, just like so. So now I have two lines on the couplings right here and right here. All right? Okay. That kind of helps us line up our handles so everything's nice and straight. And then what I do is I grab some more masking tape. And I tape it on 
to the combustion chamber. And this is going to help me line up the holes for the bolts on the uh, combustion chamber. And for the front grip, I like to center it on the coupling. There's usually like a line where it was cast, and you can line it up with the line on your part. And that's pretty much center right there. And so you just tape that down. Both sides. Oops. Sure so, Dan, you keep on mentioning uh, the word combustion chamber. What is that for this project, and why is it important? Aha. So, the combustion chamber is a large volume uh, container, all right? Okay. And it's sealed on one end, and then the other end is open to the barrel. And so, the idea is, is the projectile, which is in the barrel, acts as a temporary seal. Okay. All right, so you fill the combustion chamber with your fuel and air mixture, and then we're going to use a piezoelectric barbecue igniter. That's that red button there. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a spark, a blue spark like the spark plugs of your car. And that's and the electrode, electrode, right? That's the electrodes. Okay. All right, and then that spark ignites the fuel-air mixture inside the combustion chamber, which causes the air to rapidly expand and it pushes on the projectile and it pushes the projectile out the barrel at a very high velocity and then when it leaves the barrel all the gas escapes. Okay. Alright, so that's why it's called a combustion chamber. Okay, so we have the combustion chamber here which we're working right. on, trying to make that bigger. And then you have your barrel. Which is And those are the two main parts. So combustion chamber right here, right. And then barrel where you actually put in, well this one's for a tennis ball, right? That, this that one's for a tennis shed. ball, has a, a 2.5 inch barrel. Okay. So for those of you who want to build a tennis ball cannon, you want to get 2.5 inch uh, Schedule 40 PVC. It's perfect for tennis balls. All right. Now that we have our thing taped, we're going to switch to a 3 16th inch drill bit. Like so. And then we're just going to go through the holes that we already drilled into our uh, tape here. Okay. And what I do is I just like to start it. So you just do that. Do that. And then we take it off and we drill all the way through. Oh, okay. So you kind of do like a pilot drill to start. Yeah, you just kind of get it started. And so now we have two holes that are in the right spot to match your coupler. Okay. And then you're just going to drill all the way through. All right, so you got two holes like this, right there, okay, and right there, and then we're going to take a quarter twenty bolt. That's an inch and a quarter inch, inch and a quarter long. This is our bolt right here, and we're going to start the thread. So we're going to just, I just do it by hand, get it kind of wedged in there, and then you're going to use a wrench. I'm going to use a ratchet and you you just want to go in a little bit and make sure the threads are started okay and then I'm going to back out actually and I'm going to do the other side and then we'll use those threads to bolt the uh, grip base to the uh, combustion chamber so Dan I forgot in my intro to recommend to everyone who's watching um, if you have questions or comments for us, as always, with all these Hangouts, um, go ahead and leave us comments below this post. Uh, we'll ask Dan those questions for you. Uh, Ibby and Ben will be taking your questions. So if you have comments or an answer to something we're asking, um, go ahead and write in all caps questions, and then the mate team will take your questions. And uh, Ibby and Ben, do we have any questions for Dan as we start? Um, we have one so far. Uh, can you use cooking spray as a fuel? Ooh. Cooking spray it might work, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not as flammable, so it might not uh, give you enough oomph. Okay. And I have a question. I know this PVC glue smells terrible. Is it yes. toxic in any way? It's actually, um, you don't really want to be uh, inhaling it a lot, so you should be doing it in a ventilated room. And uh, it's also slightly corrosive. And... Um, okay. It's actually very flammable too, so you should be careful when you're uh, 
building this to wait for the glue to dry before you start playing with it. Okay, and how fast does it dry? Is it pretty quick? Yeah, like I said, for um, full pressure use, uh, you just need to wait 30 minutes. And it will vary by the different uh, type you're using too, right? So yeah, like with small diameter beams. pipe, it's faster. With larger diameter pipe, it's, it takes a little bit longer. Okay. Right, so now I've got the T on here, and I have the two bolts started, and then I'm just going to finish putting it down all the way, screwing it down all the way. And again, that this part of the build, right, Dan? It's the like the base to these handles, right? So, Abby and Ben, have you ever actually made a uh, like a combustion cannon or potato launcher before? I made one. Um, How did it turn out? Ago. It worked well. Yeah. Mine was an air cannon, though. Oh, so how was that different, Ben? Um, you pumped it up with a bike pump or an air compressor. Um, the combustion chamber, not even the combustion chamber, the air pressure chamber was smaller than Dan's. Uh, usually referred to as the uh, reservoir. Reservoir, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but it was smaller than Dan's, but it's it was scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I made actually a similar one when we were younger. Uh, my friends had were building one, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. We spent like the whole afternoon launching like all the produce we could find in the kitchen. Right, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> were they were they both made out of PVC as well, or did you use different materials? PVC. PVC, PVC. yeah. So it seems like PVC is pretty common for this type of project. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully it's readily available at most hardware stores. It usually is. Cool. Another another material you can make these, uh, especially these combustion cannons, I wouldn't do it with air cannons, is uh, what's referred to as ABS. It's usually a, a black pipe. And I like to use ABS because it... Um, when it when it catastrophically fails, not that that ever happens. Um, good to plan though, right? Backup plan. Good to plan. Backup plan. <laughs> yeah. Safety first. Safety third. Um, instead of fragmenting like the PVC does, it just like will tear or will split in one spot. Oh, so PVC shatters into little fragments, whereas this ABS yeah, which can be kind of dangerous. Okay. Oh, okay. That's why we wrap, wrap it in duct tape because it, it contains those fragments. All right. So we're gonna do what we did on the front on the back, same thing. But instead of centering it on the coupler, we've got to worry about the threads on the inside. Oh. So I'm going to place it uh, as far forward on the coupler as possible. So it's pretty much, you know, in line with the coupler right there. And I'm going to just use the tape. Okay. Oops. Mark my lines. That's like... Nice. These things are heavy. So yeah. that, like, Dan, you were saying... This is that threaded piece right at the end that has the right. uh, the end cap? Right. Oh. Uh, no. So, I mean, this cap is only about three quarters of an inch um, thick, and the threads go on for about two inches, but we just don't, we want to make sure that our uh, the bolt that's going through doesn't interfere with our end cap, so it can go okay. on all the way. That's why we have it as far forward as possible. <laughs> Hey, Dan, we have another question about fuel. Cool, okay. Um, can you use bug spray as fuel? Yes. Yeah? All right. Yes. Although it smells terrible. Ooh, no <laughs> good. <laughs> so, Dan, here's the inside. You actually built this cannon the other day, right? And right. And getting ready for the hangout. So here's kind of what you're talking about. Um, yeah, you can see the here. And you don't want to get too close to the front of the cap, right? Right. So you got to make sure you space it out kind of. Before you drill, make sure you're kind of checking it out as you go yeah. along. Yeah. Okay. Because you still need to have room for the cap, right? Right. The thread on all the way. Okay. Now the threads on these are actually uh, taper threads, so they actually have a slight, oh. you know, taper to them. That causes them to seal the farther you, um, you know, screw it on. Okay. okay. That's kind of like other uh, pipe fittings, right? The, uh, yeah, the like PVC. brass fittings or, or black pipe fittings and stuff like that. And so is this a project that you kind of came up with, or did you see other tutorials online? How did you learn about this kind of stuff? This is kind of my version of the, the basic, you know, potato cannon. Okay. Um, I, I've always uh, believed in having good grips 
what a lot of these people will do is they'll just kind of tape the igniter off to the side of the combustion chamber and hold it, you know, kind of cradle it in their hands. And it's it always seemed awkward to me. So I, I yeah. developed these grips, and they make it really easy to hold on to it and aim it yeah, and I mean, everything like that. So like, rev on, be like, rah. Yeah. yeah. I've always been a fan of, like, you know, the minigun style, you know, handhold. So. Like a big bazooka. Like, yeah, exactly. Secure. And so you also have, besides this project, you've actually built one that's out of Black ABS, right? Right. And we'll be showing that after we Pretty build this here, cannon. Yeah. And uh, you have a name for the, the, the cannon, is that correct? Yes. What is what is the name of this uh, this cannon uh, you created? I, I call her Black Bur uh, Big Bertha. <laughs> Big Bertha. <laughs> that's a good one. But that's yeah. using the, the Black ABS pipe, right? Right. Okay, so that's another example of the materials we could use. Right. Dan, we have another question. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, what do you recommend as a good length for a combustion chamber of the cannon? Oh. Um, my favorite dimension is four inch, schedule forty, by two feet. Uh, that gives it's it's you know it's large, but it's not too awkward, and it gives you a really good volume, and you get a lot of power out of it. Uh, I've seen some guys using you know, like six inch PVC and it just gets too big. It's too <laughs> awkward. It's, yeah. So I, I my favorite dimension is four inch PVC with uh, that's twenty four inches long or two feet long. So you can see the difference. Um, so this is the one that Dan built and this is the four inch. Right. There's a huge difference. So what is what is having all this volume good for, Dan? Uh, it means you can put more fuel into the combustion chamber and, and, you know, and have the right amount of air mixture. So more fuel means you know, larger volume of expanding gases means more power. And is it also easier if you have a bigger chamber to get the, the, uh, the fuel to air ratio? Right. When you're using this aerosol stuff, it's kind of 50-50 um, if it's actually going to work. So by having a larger volume, um, you can fire it uh, at a lean mixture and still have enough power to propel the projectile at a significant velocity. And so what, is, what does a lean mixture mean when you're talking about like... A lean mixture uh, means fuel. that there's uh, less than the optimum fuel to air ratio. Okay. So less fuel per volume of air. So right? really and then a, a rich good... mixture, which won't fire at all, means oh. that there's too much fuel and not enough air. So really we're trying to find that optimum Right, kind of middle ground between enough fuel and enough air inside right. the combustion chamber. Right, and it's like a, okay. I think it's like a one to four, you know, one part fuel, four part air, for um. Kind of roughly combustion. for for good. Yeah, just kind of for firing. good measure. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now I've attached the back one, so now I have both mounts on there, and I can start working on the actual grip. So I have here an elbow. This is a three quarter inch elbow. I have some three quarter inch pipe. So I'm going to cut the pipe into a um, five inch section and a one and a half inch section. All right, so uh, finish this off. So these are PVC pipe cutters. You can get them at your local hardware store. They're mm -hmm. pretty easy to get. I'm just going to mark this out. And if not, you could always use like a hacksaw, um, yeah. something around the garage. But those are really handy for making really fast cuts. Nice clean cuts, yeah. Nice clean cuts. How's yours going, Ben and Evie? Uh, well, we actually lost you uh, <laughs> when I was supposed to cut the um, elbow in half. Our, our uh, little tea thing isn't cut. And so I didn't pre cut it? Oh, you guys. <laughs> I you know, know I know. The, the hangout. Ah. <laughs> but, so, so what could you use around the lab that we have? You could use a hacksaw? Yes, mm -hmm. that's what okay. I used. What about, could you use a Dremel if you have that as well? Yeah, that'll work too. Okay. So maybe, Ben, you want to run around and find some parts for us? I have the parts. It's just going to take a little while. <laughs> okay. Right, grab, grab that blue vice. That's what I used to hold it. All right. So Ben will be back. All right. Um, thank you, Ben. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Ibby, what else? So, uh, like, my, the combustion can that I have isn't quite finished. It's, it's almost there, but we need to wrap it in duct tape. So um, that'll be, like, the last step that we get to. Um, we have some cool colors that we could wrap this around with? Oh, we have all sorts of colors. 
I personally love this new trend of colorful duct tape. Okay. We've got turquoise, which is one of my favorite colors, so that's exciting. But you can get, like, leopard patterned and zebra and, like, all sorts of crazy neon colors. So... Awesome, and you actually were um, the one who helped me build the duct tape tutorial that we showed off for the first kind of couple days of makeup camp. Um, yeah, yeah. And that was the same idea, right? A lot of cool colors of duct tape. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Dan, does it matter what kind of duct tape we use to cover this up, or can it be anything colorful? And I can be anything you want, just as long as it's duct tape. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I really want to make a bumblebee potato cannon. I think that will be fun. Okay. So. <laughs> I think I have some. I got some yellow. I need some black. I also have, I thought it was very fitting, I have caution tape uh, black <laughs> there you go. and yellow. So I thought from the caution cannon, good safety warning. All right, so here I have, I have two five-inch pieces, and I have two one-and-a-half-inch pieces. That's for both grips. All right. So we're going to get our PPC glue out again. There you go, like that. Hey Dan, I have a question from some one of the campers. Okay. Um, they're asking, would using brass fittings together with PVC pipe compromise the seals, or, and is it fairly easy to incorporate both metal and plastics into this sort of project? Um, you have to be a little bit careful when you're threading um, um, brass parts uh, through the coupling because sometimes it can push the pipe uh, away from the coupling and cause a leak. So you just have to you know, take your time. Uh, maybe with the larger fittings, you want to use an actual pipe tap to okay. uh, pre-thread it. Um, but otherwise, using metal fittings on uh, PVC uh, parts is no problem at all. And you can also do the pressure test, right, Ben? You can get, uh, get like, some soapy water and try to fill up the uh, combustion chamber with like, pressured air, see if the bubbles form on the outside. A good way to test for leaks? That's um, only really necessary for um, air cannons because they, they, oh, okay. they need to be perfectly sealed. With uh, combustion cannons, it's okay to have a couple of leaks because it, the reaction happens so quickly that th if the leaks are small enough, it doesn't have enough time to actually uh, affect the performance. Okay, so if you are designing a, uh, an air cannon versus a combustion cannon, there are some different things to consider. Yeah, there's different tolerances. Okay. Um, we have a question from Buddy. Uh, what would be a good alternative to duct tape? Electrical tape. Okay. Or um, you probably would want to use masking tape, though, right? Masking tape, I wouldn't recommend. It'd probably tear, or you'd have to do a lot of layers of it. Really, the the duct tape is for uh, for an extra layer of protection, right? Right. It's really going to hold the. It, it, has, it has, has good, you know, tensile strength. So um, when it does fail, it kind of holds everything together. All right, so now I have two grips like this. Okay. You know, I've glued the little ends Ooh, on like this. All right, now we can move on to our igniter assembly. This is a Weber igniter kit. It's our piezoelectric igniter. You can buy it at your hardware store. Just look at the barbecue section. They usually have these for like, you know, ten or thirteen dollars. And uh, they they vary from kit to kit. This one has a little igniter box and some wires. The wires are good because they're nice high voltage wires. And then we have the actual igniter assembly. This is uh, the piezoelectric igniter. It has the red button. You can click it like that. You can hold on to it and get a little shock like that. So then what is what is a piezoelectric lighter? How is it different than a spark lighter? Um, what, it, uh, what a piezoelectric uh, igniter uses is it uses a, a a material that has piezoelectric properties. That means if you apply pressure to it, it will exert uh, voltage. Oh, okay. So quartz is what they use in this, and they use in a lot of piezoelectric applications. When you strike it with the hammer, this little spring-loaded hammer right here, it creates you know a high voltage um, potential, which causes it to arc through the air. Gotcha. Right, so, so instead of having like flint rubbing, you have like this actual material that releases that a charge. That produces a, a voltage. So what you do is you take the wires out, they just pop out like that, and you're going to want to trim the ends off of only one side. So we want uh, these two sides because they fit into our igniter, but then these sides we don't need. So I'm just going to trim those off real quick. 
So for everybody at home, I'll share, uh, this is part of Dan's tutorial, and if you can see on the screen, this is what the actual matter looks like. Um, kind of close up view. You're going to want to take the tips off, Dan? Is that right? Yeah, you want to clip those ends off. So now these are clipped. And you see how I fitted this into the igniter like this. And then what I like to do is I like to uh, tape the wires to the uh, body of the igniter to just to keep them from getting unplugged. Okay. Accidentally. So I just take a little bit of electrical tape and wrap it around nice and tight. Like so... Just like that. So easy. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take one of your grips, and you're going to have to feed these wires through the grip. And it's kind of tricky because it uh, there's a nice elbow right there. And what you can do is you can kind of bend the wires at an angle like this. It makes it a little bit easier to fit down the pipe. Once they're through, just pull it all the way through. Okay. And what's nice about these igniters is they fit perfectly in three-quarter inch PVC, just like that. <laughs> all right. Snap into place. Then you can use a little bit more, a little bit more electrical tape. And you can just tape that in there, like so. So, is this the first uh, style of igniter that you, you thought of, or was this after a couple of trial and errors of you figuring out what does does it work? This was a couple of trial and errors. Yeah. What you uh, What you start out with the first time? Uh, like wooden ones that I cut out on a bandsaw. Yeah, uh, but those had a tendency of breaking, and the screws never held so well. So uh, I eventually evolved into this one, and it, and it works really good. And it's a lot more reliable. That's the right. That's the whole point of the piezo right. electric matter. Right, right. Uh, cool. The problem with the flint ones is they wear out, and then the flint you oh. have to replace the flint. So here we have grip like this with the wire and the igniter, everything like that. All right. So now we're going to put it on our combustion chamber. First things first, you got to feed the wires through the T and out the back. So same thing again, just kind of fiddle with the wires till they show up. I think we lost your partner, Ivy. Seems like Ben has been gone a long time in the lab. Yeah, well, he's cutting apart those T pieces. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right, so you see how I, you know, put the wires through. And this is still loose. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on this, and then I'm going to okay. stick it in permanently. Dan, we have a question from one of our campers. All right. Um, Timothy asks, could you just add a valve and pump in 500 PSI and then release the valve? Yes, that would be what an air cannon is. Would you want to use 500 PSI, Dan? Is that about standard? And not with PVC. Okay, uh, cool. uh, safely rated for 200 PSI. If you want to do 500 PSI, which is using like compressed nitrogen or something like that, or maybe a scuba tank, you need to go with something metal. Okay. Okay. All right. So now our grip is attached. It's glued and everything like that. Don't worry if you get a little glue on the wires. It won't hurt it. All right. And we can go ahead and glue on our other grip. Like so. So now we have both our grips like that. Really easy. Right. Makes a cool clicking noise too when you uh Yeah, it makes it. a satisfying click. Yeah. Nice big red button if you get the uh, the barbecue one that does. All right, now we can move on to the electrodes. Oh, hey, Ben, you're back. <laughs> now, in my parts list, I have you get these two long brass screws, these 6 by 32 screws, all right? Now, to, for the best, um, to create the best kind of spark, you need to have a point because uh, high voltage likes to accumulate at points. So uh, if you have two points, uh, it'll allow for a larger spark. So what I do to make the point, rather than struggling with the file, by hand is I chuck up the screw in the cordless drill like this and then I take a file and holding it securely to the table 
turn it on, and I rub the file against it like this at an angle, and it creates a nice little point. So, Dan, what are you doing right there when you're actually using the file? Are you shaving off pieces? Yeah, you're, you're filing off um, just the tip. And okay. It becomes a little point like this. You want a nice sharp little point like that. You're going to do that to two of these screws because you need two. So I'll do the other one here real quick. Now we have two sharpened screws, like so. All right, now that we have those, we can go ahead and strip the ends off of our, um, our wires here. You're only going to need to take about like a quarter inch of insulation off. So you strip off the wires. Then we're going to use these ring style insulated terminals. Okay. And we're going to put those on. We're going to crimp those on. Uh, if you don't have a crimper, you can solder them on. Do whatever you uh, have access to. Dan, we have a quick question about the igniter. All right. Um, how much does the igniter cost on average? Uh, around ten to fifteen dollars. Okay. Seems reasonable. And uh, are they all made equally, Dan? Are there better brands than others that you would trust? I would go with like Weber. Yeah. That's probably a good brand to go with. All right, so now that we have these insulated terminals on the ends of the wires here, we can go ahead and insert our electrodes. Uh, I also have you get these 6 by 32 inch brass nuts. So you're going to want to put those on first all the way. Right. Right. Yeah. If you look at what Nick's got, <laughs> it would that's focus. what we're going to do. <laughs> right there. Yep. And so by doing it this way, it allows you to adjust the distance of the gaps. Between the ga uh, it allows you to adjust the gap, sorry, um, which can uh, kind of allow you to tune how well it performs. If the gap's too wide, it won't fire um, reliably. The spark won't fire. And if it's too close, they won't have enough energy to ignite the fuel air mixture. So you gotta kinda And Dan, when you say sorry, when you say gap, you mean like the actual physical space between the two points we just made, right? Right. Okay. And so when you click the button, they'll they'll actually spark between the two? Yes. Okay, so we have to actually do you know what's the recommended space for that gap or do you just have to experiment? It's, to it's anywhere between a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch. Okay. All right, so same thing like we did with the bolts on the grips. You want to kind of start the, the threads by hand. And then, uh, in this case, we can uh, finish with the uh, cordless drill because they're kind of long. So I'm going to start decking out my potato cannon, combustion awesome. can, in tape as we keep on going. There's a cool kind of pattern going on to it. Yeah, I like it. So Dan, as always, what are some safety considerations when using the drill? Probably have like safety glasses. Make yeah, sure you're probably have, uh, wearing safety glasses. Permission. Uh, even with the PVC glue, um, probably good to have gloves on. Uh, working well with the area. Working a very well ventilated room. This stuff smells terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And then probably even some safety about firing, right? Like make sure that wherever you are. Know, uh, know what the laws are, you know? Some places yeah. might not allow you to have these kind of things. Um, do, do the research, figure out how to get out of your house, you can fire them safely. Right. Uh, 
Don't go to like a park and assume that you can have them there. You know, check yeah, don't after. don't take them to parks. Usually, you should do it on like private property or or just you know places that are away from the public. Yeah. And always and always do the research to make sure that uh, you can legally have them. Yeah. So, man, it's hard to wrap the duct tape around these handle points. Yeah, it is. So, I don't know how well you can see this. I kind of missed with mine, but you can <laughs> oh, see the yeah. gaps. Yeah. So, uh, you might need to make the gaps a little bit closer than you normally would, just so that they'll uh, arc across. Let me see. Maybe I can share. Can you guys, if I put this up here, let me get the duct tape off. Get my pocket knife out. Yeah, I also forgot to ask you about in the beginning. Uh, you have a lot of experience just building stuff from being a Boy Scout, right? Yes. And so you actually told me a couple stories that you there's a level beyond a Boy Scout, right? Is that? Uh, well, you, you're like an Eagle Scout. Like, what is that? Well, I've I've achieved the rank of Eagle Scout, and I kind of stopped um, doing Boy Scouts after that. But there's actually the Ranger Scouts. Oh. And Ranger Scouts are for, you know, 18 and older kids or young adults, and it's actually co-ed, so there's boys and girls. And do they do a lot of stuff like this, uh, Boy yeah, Scouts, Eagle Scouts? they do a lot, lot of, uh, you know, hiking and camping and, you know, rifle shooting and archery and stuff like that. Cool. All right, so we've got our electrodes in, and they're all wired to our thing, and when you click this button... You should see a little spark between the gaps. All right. Now okay. That we're done with that. That's basically our combustion chamber. It's finished. All right. Now we can go ahead and attach our barrel, which is this long piece. This is, uh, like I mentioned before, it's 1.5 inch PVC, and it's uh, 36 inches long or 3 feet long. All right. So we get our glue out again. There. Put a barrel in. Oh, there. You're done. All right. So, is there a is, what's the how do you tell what length to make that uh, that barrel, Dan? It's usually uh, like a three to one. Cool. And if you have or a longer there. barrel, does that change anything, or a shorter barrel? Um, usually, a longer barrel will increase the velocity, but only to a point. Um, okay. there, uh, if you look on the one of the websites that we provide, uh, Burnt Lake, they did some experiments with barrel lengths. Oh. And they actually, with a 10-foot barrel when they were firing potatoes, there wasn't enough gas. So the potato would go all the way to the end of the barrel and it actually create a vacuum. and would suck the potato back in and it would explode inside the combustion chamber. Oh, so <laughs> too long of a barrel can be a bad thing. Exactly. So we're shooting ping pong balls today, so that's a pretty safe experiment. But uh, yeah. yeah, maybe try ping pong balls before you go up to the potatoes. Yeah, you should definitely stick with ping pong balls for now. Excuse All right, me. so we've got a barrel on. One of the issues is is um, sometimes the projectile, especially with the ping pong balls, will fall through into the combustion chamber. So what I like to do is uh, put a bolt through the uh, the breech of the barrel to keep things from falling out. So you're going to use your uh, 3 16 inch drill bit. Drill a hole all the way through the barrel, both ends of the barrel. This. So. Uh -oh. you be missing bolts. <laughs> are you missing some parts out in the woods, Dan? I am missing some parts out in the woods. You are far. You are far away from a hardware store. I'm guessing. Yeah, but <laughs> luckily I have one already made. 
All right, so let's check this one so out. So if you check this out, you can see I put a bolt right here that goes all the way through, and that keeps things from going all the way into the combustion chamber right here. All right, and as you can also see, I've duct taped this one. Very nice. You must be a Boy Scout. You're always prepared, Dan. Always prepared. So right. what's so f you uh, let's see. We put the barrel on. You put the the bolt through. What else? And that's it. You're done. That's it. Yep. You just screw on the end cap, like here, and you're done. That's a completed cannon. Awesome. Are we gonna see a, a live demo of uh, the ping pong shooter possibly? Uh, or do you have something else to show us? I have something else to show you. Okay. As I previously mentioned, I built my own cannon. Big Bertha. <laughs> Welcome, Big Bertha. Uh, welcome to Maker Camp. This is oh, Big Bertha. Man. Whoa. <laughs> right here. As you can see, it's considerably larger. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, it has a larger chamber, and as it's made out of the black ABS. So some improvements on this is I have a fuel metering system. So rather than uh, just guessing how much fuel you should put inside the combustion chamber, I have this metering system that injects the proper amount of fuel for this volume of chamber uh, accurately every single time. So you have the right amount of fuel mixture every single time. So it pretty much fires every single time, which is really nice. It's really fun. So it's a lot more reliable kind this. of than ping pong. Yes. The way I achieve this is these two valves right here. <laughs> so I have about you know, a seven inch long piece of uh, um, half inch pipe right here, black pipe, metal pipe. And so what you do is you open one valve. And the gas from the fuel fills up this, this, this pipe right here. And you close it, and so now it's sealed up. And then when you open it, this one, it injects it into the chamber. Junk. And now you have the right amount of fuel inside your chamber. Another thing that I added was this ball valve right here, this big two-inch ball valve right here. Yeah. It gets kind of tiresome to uh, unscrew and screw on that, uh, that cap on the back of your cannon every right, time. Right, right. And sometimes it gets dirty and it gets right stuck here. and it doesn't come off. So what I do is I just have this big ball valve, and when you want to open the chamber, you just open it. And when you want to close it, you just turn it like this, and now it's sealed. Super easy. Makes it very efficient. That's a good improvement. Yeah. And so, and another thing is I have dual igniters. Oh, what does that do? I'm creating two sparks inside the combustion chamber, oh. which increases the reliability. Also increases the combustion. So it also increases the uh, reliability. So it makes it very redundant. In addition, I also have a, a different barrel. So what I did is I, I put a, a male threaded fitting on the end of here, and then I just need to have a female thread fitting on the end of my barrel, and I can use different barrels. This barrel is designed for soda cans, and it's 3-inch ABS. It's actually two pieces, and I sleeve one normal size 3-inch PVC, a 3-inch ABS pipe with another one after I've cut a slit in it, and it creates the perfect diameter for... Soda cans. So that's a pretty custom barrel right there for the soda cans? Yes. Yeah. And are you shooting uh, empty soda cans or full soda cans, Dan? I shoot empty ones primarily, but I have shot full ones, and they are very entertaining but extremely dangerous. <laughs> uh, the last mod that I add is I add a fan inside the combustion chamber, and what that does is it expediates the ventilation because after combustion oh. there's you know exhaust gases which don't burn. So you need to get those out of your combustion chamber before you can fire it again. So I have a fan in there that helps you know blow out the the, the exhaust gases and and pulls in um, fresh air. In addition, when the system is closed and you leave the fan on, it helps to mix the fuel and air okay. more evenly and creates you know more cleaner combustion. Dan, we have a really quick question. Um, All right. How many PSI can Big Bertha handle? <laughs> I never actually tested the PSI. <laughs> it, it happens so instantaneously that it would be really hard to read it. I guess I could put a pressure gauge on it and videotape it and then play it back in slow-mo to see what kind of pressure spike we're getting. Oh, okay. And really, this is still like a combustion cannon, right? So there's, yes, this there's is a combustion, combustion cannon, and then there's the air cannon. Right. Okay. And there's one more. There's the hybrid cannon. Wait, hybrid cannon is a combination of air cannons and combustion cannons. And the way they work is, huh. think about it, you can only have so much fuel inside this chamber to, in order to have enough air to, to combust that fuel. But say you want to add more fuel for the same size chamber. What you can do is you can add twice the amount of fuel and then you can pressurize it with oh. compressed air. So now you can have 
two times the amount of fuel with two times the amount of air, or you can have five times the amount of fuel and five times the amount of air with the same volume of chamber. Now these get really, really dangerous because they are working with much higher pressures. So you usually have to make it out of, you know, the low end ones will use schedule 80 or schedule 120 PVC, and then the high end ones will actually go all the way to metal combustion chambers and metal barrels exclusively. Because okay. they're working with such high pressure. They're also actually a, a lot more sensitive, so you have to have very accurate pressure gauges and valves to, uh, in order to the work. And also, as the pressure increases in here, the resistance of the air increases, so the spark doesn't work as well. So you have to have you know, high voltage ignition sources like stun guns or actual car ignition systems. But they're really cool. Some people have claimed supersonic velocities with hybrid cannons. Insane. Impressive, right? Insane. I have yet to build one, but I plan to. <laughs> I'm sure you have tons of plans already. Oh, yeah. I have a Gatling gun one. I have a sniper rifle. I have a shotgun and grenade launcher, everything. And these are all just compressed air or uh, They're compressed air, cannons. combustions. They're all made out of PVC and wood and a little bit of metal. Yeah. So for the basic the basics, like uh, lesson we've had today, you can kind of expand and keep on Start adding. You that, can add expand. And then do research online. I provide a couple of online sources that are great. And just experiment. Have fun. Play with it. Don't hurt anyone. Don't hurt yourself. So that probably is a good leaving point, Dan. Uh, just remind us, what are some good safety features uh, for either using this ping pong shooter or something like Big Bertha? What should we always keep Never in mind? Never point at anything that you're going to shoot. OK. Uh, always treat the weapon like it's ready to fire. And uh, make sure you're firing in a safe place. Cool. Amy, do we have any more uh, questions for Dan? Uh, yeah, we have a couple. Most of them relate to our uh, smaller launchers, not uh, fine. Big Bertha. Um, so how long do we have to hold the spray button down for the launcher? The fuel? Yeah. Oh, okay. um, you're going to have to experiment with that. It depends on what fuel source you're using. It can be a very short burst or it can be a very long burst. It depends on what fuel you get your hands on. So you're going to have to experiment. I can't really give you a definitive answer. Part of the making process, though. Yeah, kind of check it out and experiment. Okay, cool. Um, also, like, how much does it cost to make this this one? Is it something you can just buy whole? Uh, it it varies from you know place to place. Certain places have PVC for really cheap. Certain places have for more expensive prices. Um, it can range from twenty five to fifty dollars for like this cannon. And then for like Big Bertha here, it can reach you know, like two hundred dollars for um, advanced combustion cannons like that. Oh wow! <coughs> what kind of projectiles can this thing shoot? Can I shoot water balloons? Uh, water balloons are tricky. I've actually achieved it by using uh, Dixie cups. And what you do is you put the water, you make the water balloon small enough to fit in the Dixie cup. And what you do is you cut little slits around the edge of the Dixie cup so it'll spread out. And it kind of acts like a, a wadding, like on a shotgun shell. Yeah. And so it cradles the water balloon inside the barrel, and then as soon as it leaves the barrel, the little flaps open up and it and it it, it pulls yeah. away, and then the water balloon fires out. It doesn't work every time. It usually bursts in the barrel, but when it does, <laughs> it's pretty cool. That's awesome. cool. That's cool. All right. Some well, other projectiles? Or yeah. No, there's the other projectiles, Dan. What else you talked about? A really interesting one that I am a personal fan of is we have 3D printers at the lab. And nice. what I did is I designed these custom projectiles. I call them rockets. And they, they have a nice, you know, sleek aerodynamic profile, and they have little fins on that have a slight curve to them so that when it flies through the air, it actually spins like a football. Now, I have a long, like, six-foot, two-and-a-half-inch barrel that I fired these things out. And the first time I fired it, I was firing it almost vertically, and I paced it out when I finally found the thing because it took us forever. I actually put a light in it so we could find it at night. Right. Uh, I paced it out to like 700 feet from Just a vertical firing position. Firing, yeah, so it, it, it arced and landed 700 feet away, and I, I kind of did some calculations. Oh. And I figured it was, in the air, it was in the air for like 20 seconds, and it went about 3,000 feet into the air. <sighs> Yeah. And wow. then when we, fired, when we tried, we've only tried this once, but we fired horizontally. <laughs> and um, I don't know, you should go to Google Maps and you should look at uh, O'Reilly headquarters. And you can see our parking lot. Well, I fired it from one end of the parking lot and we never found it. It went past the end of the parking lot. It's somewhere in a farm field somewhere. We've, we're never going to find it again. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow. Well, we, have, we have another question. What about confetti? Do you think that could be fired? Confetti oh. is a classic for these things. <laughs> it, they, they usually use them with air cannons because the um, combustion buttons kind of set the confetti on fire. Not so good. Not, not so good. Not so good. But the confetti ones, you know, confetti cannons, they're really fun. You no. put stuff a whole bunch down there and it just creates uh -huh. this huge cloud of confetti. It's, it's very entertaining. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Any more questions, Ivy, for Dan about the combustion cannons? Uh, no, I think we've covered it all. Okay. All right. Dan, anything else you want to tell us about uh, you, or what's the best place to reach you if you want to find out more information about your projects, your cannons? Uh, uh, you can reach me at the, uh, the Google Camp. Um, I always look at it every day, and if you have any questions or comments, I'll be reading them, so you can contact me through there. Cool. And um, maybe we'll post a couple of videos of you firing off a big yes, burger. there are a couple of videos on the uh, Make website. Okay. And uh, anything else before we uh, sign off? Be sure to see the video where we actually launch a GoPro camera out of my cannon, and we get <laughs> video footage of it flying through the air and hitting the ground. That one's my favorite. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, uh, big thanks to Dan and uh, Avi and Ben for uh, hanging out with us today. This is an awesome project. Uh, as always, please check out the safety warnings. Uh, go ahead and check out Dan's tutorial. Lots of uh, pictures and information about how to follow along. Uh, you can follow along with the video, too. Um, I'm going to go test mine out. Pretty soon. Thanks for uh, building it, Dan. Good luck. And uh, as always, we'll have the junior counselor hangout uh, in about half an hour from now. Uh, we'll have uh, Ben and Ibby hanging out. If you want to ask us questions, talk about the project, see more about how we built it. Um, oh, hey, hey, why don't we uh, fire off one shot? Just you so sure? everyone can see. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's just do it with uh, Big Bertha here because I know, I'm pretty sure that she'll work this time. That's an <laughs> awesome surprise. Okay. All right, so we have some empty soda cans here. My lovely assistant. Sure. <laughs> so it's kind of a tight fit. You just push it in like that. In your barrel like so. Screw on your barrel. We have a nice flying range, very scenic. No <laughs> pedestrians or very safe, property. right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very safe. All right. I'm gonna turn on the fan. Gonna open up. We're gonna close off the chamber like that. Seats closed up. Okay. We're gonna open valve one. Open valve two. We're ready to fire. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, we couldn't really see that because the glare. How far did that go? You think? Uh, well, empty soda cans don't go far, and that's why I use them because they they slow down a lot. But the, the sound was great because it echoes across the valley. We could hear it like three echoes away. It was yeah. really cool. Any chance we can get one more demo out of you from Big Yeah, we'll get one more shot here. Okay. So now we got combustion gases in the chamber, so I'm going to open this up. And the fan is still on, so now it's ventilating. I'll load in another thing. We gotta wait a little bit for it to ventilate. I should okay. put a more powerful fan in there, but I, don't know, I haven't gotten around to it. <laughs> I'm sure everyone who's been watching at home has been waiting for this moment, so I think we've got a couple more seconds. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see what All right, let's, uh, is this going to work for you, you think? Looks pretty good so far. All right. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> oh, you can really see it fly out. <laughs> you hear it land? <laughs> How's that? That was awesome. great. That was so cool. Awesome. Cool. All right. Any more demos, Dan? I think that's it. We're kind of out of time. Okay, cool. Well, uh, again, thanks to Dan. Um, check Dan's uh, Google Plus account out, just uh, Dan Spangler. Uh, post lots of cool content. Uh, Ibby and Ben, thanks again for hanging out. Looking forward to seeing what you guys build in the lab. Uh, we'll post some pictures. Yep. And, um, yeah, make sure you hang out with us for the Junior Council Hangout. Let us know at the bottom of this post. Uh, I want to be in the Hangout, and uh, we'll get some questions answered for you. And as always, um, Quick reminder, I am actually heading out on vacation tomorrow. Uh, I will be kayaking, uh, kayak camping all week. 
Um, so we'll have a uh, guest host, uh, Tyler Mosquite. You'll see him uh, hanging out with uh, everybody else. So uh, a new face. He'll be pretty fun. And um, I'll be checking my Google Plus regularly. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. But uh, as always, thanks, Dan. We'll see you in the labs. And uh, you guys later. talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye.